All right, I am now at Replacement Humans 2 Clones. This is section 7. The ending of the novel has always been a problem for readers. Um, the people who accept Haldeman's never ending war, basically, um, are upset that it actually does end. Um, and uh, yeah, then there's this feeling about the ending itself. Some people feel that it's a happy ending and they hate it. Um, some people feel that um, it is not a happy ending and they hate that. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't you can't please people. Um, and so there's a division about this. If we look at the actual ending of the book, so we're now we're sort of looking at the very last pages of the book. Um, the last word in, in the book is a little news item, right? Which comes from Paxton. Uh, so it is typical, it's the same kind of thing where um, you use, uh, you know, you have a by, uh, you have a, a, <coughs> a byline like this is where the, um, this is where the thing, this is where the dispatch comes from and it was written by this person, that's the byline. Uh, so the headline is, you know, Paxton, middle finger, so here's, so this is, you know, Paxton is Pax in Latin is peace. So this is peace town, right? Middle finger. So it's the it's the planet um, in this you know the spiral arm of one of these galaxies. Middle finger. That's you know that, that which which one that one is. So it's like here's the novelist giving the finger to the to the the universe. Like you know that's it's like here flipping you the bird. And what's the date? Fourteen to thirty one forty three. So it's uh whatever the long is the war is like 13 yeah 1143 years long so it's 1100 years later than our current time and but it's 14 to what is that date mm. what happens on this in the second month on the 14th day oh yeah that's right you know it's it's valentine's day and on Valentine's Day, um, the the headline is "Old Timer Has First Boy" on two sixty five. Okay, so this is a a pure Hollywood ending, um, you know, where the 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 gal and the guy get together, they get married, presumably, um, and you know, Mary Gay gives birth to a son. Oh boy, a son, and you know, life is going to be carried on, and you know, it's all wonderful. And um, the novelist is is letting you know, uh, you know, don't don't take this, don't take this straight up. You know, first of all, it comes from Peace Town. It's like okay, but then you're getting the middle finger, and it's happening on <laughs> Valentine's Day. It's like, uh, you know, what are the odds? Um, so there's a great deal of irony and, and humor in this. And there actually is another ending. I mean, there are many endings to this novel, but I think the real ending, uh, because this ending essentially is produced for people who, <laughs> you know, <laughs> would have been disappointed if it, you know, it didn't have this, it didn't have a happy ending. Or, and at the time, I mean, in the 70s, like this, an ending, like, an ending that would have been, that wouldn't say have let the, the couple be together would have been considered to be immoral. Um, because this was not a healthy story. And one of the first people who edited, um, I'm trying, yeah, one of the first people who edited the, um, an early version of the first part of the novel said, um, this is an unhealthy story. You should write about better, you know, better things, uh, which is very much the, take on essentially an anti-war book it's very interesting right that an anti-war book like this would be considered to be an unhealthy or amoral or immoral so as far as i'm concerned it's the clone story that's the real ending and the clone in their forever war tells mandela i am over 10 billion individuals but only one consciousness on 260. this is the logical outcome of this war that it all comes to this is the the entropic state the Thanos is entropy where it all comes down to one individual you know we've had billions of individuals and now we're down to one and everything else is sort of like a 
uh, pseudopod, you know, every all the people walking around of con man um, are just this sort of it's all this one. It's all become it's become a monoculture. There is no difference anymore. And the army arguably has exceeded beyond its wildest expectations of growing powerful enough to subsume all other capital O identities to make one identity where there is one point of view and there will be no disagreements. Peace at last, right? Uh, so let me ask you to reconsider what is a happy ending here. And to help you reconsider, uh, here is some uh, footage of Joe Haldeman uh, answering questions um, in an interview about this book. Have a look. In that way, you know, I enjoy when a scene works and I enjoy doing enough words in a day that I can get up from the word processor with a clear conscience. But whether you can enjoy writing a movie, writing a book that, uh, that destroys the people you come to care about is, <laughs> is moot. I, I know when I finished The Forever War, I, I wept. And it's a funny thing because the, the woman who bought the paperback rights to it said she wouldn't have bought it if it had had an unhappy ending. I looked at her and said, yeah, you know, the human race is reduced to the uh, status of experimental animals and uh, segregated on a little planet out in the backwaters of Ursa Major. But the uh, hero's girlfriend has a baby, so I guess it has a happy ending. <laughs> well, hell, she paid for it. I, I'll go along with whatever she thinks, you know. <laughs> Well, it's a thing that uh, when you talk about war, when you talk about large-scale war, you have to include overpopulation as a driver, as a, a prime uh, driver behind the necessity for it. The only way we're going to get into the future is for people to either stop reproducing so fast or kill them off fast enough that the high birth rates don't uh, uh, deprive us all of food and drink and space and air and so forth. Um, I'm, I am dystopic about that. All of these forces for good in the world telling people to have more and more babies, it's all going to work out all right. Well, it's not. There's already too many people. Well, I don't know. I, I used to think uh, along with von Clausewitz, that war was the continuation of the state's policies in extremity. And then, then I read uh, The Behaviorists, Conrad Lorenz, and thought, well, maybe war is a, an expression of male uh, aggression. It's a way to take out this basic need to exert power over people uh, and do it in some way that's socially acceptable. I don't know. See, I knew none of the soldiers that I fought with were very enthusiastic about war. See, they were all draftees. I have since met people who are professional soldiers and think it's a lot of fun. And I met a few people, three, well, three people out of hundreds in Vietnam who just loved killing people. And they were nuts. I mean, they probably loved killing people as civilians, too, and haven't been caught. Uh, a normal man will, will kill, and uh, a normal woman will, too, of course, to uh, protect his or her life and the life of, lives of friends around them. Uh, that's only natural. What governments do is put us in a situation where we have to do this day by day. And the governments know that you can't just keep doing it. After World War II, they did a study and found that uh, most men could fight for no more than about 140 days. After 140 days, their uh, efficiency declined precipitously. And by the time they'd been in combat for 180 days, they were totally unreliable. They started committing suicide. They started just sitting down and weeping. Uh, at 90 days, a man is about as at the peak of his efficiency, and he declines from then. 
I, in fact, was in combat just about 150 days, 160 days before I got wounded and uh, left uh, my military career behind. Uh, and I was, I was, I had had it. I was simply a bundle of nerves. I couldn't, I could hardly feed myself. I was so uh, afraid and anxious and guilt-ridden and so forth. But uh, I was not abnormal either. Yeah. Your protagonist, uh, William Mandela, is a, is a real cynic when it comes to war. Did that mirror yeah. your view? Well, I suppose it depends on what you call a cynic. I don't characterize myself as a cynic so much as a skeptic. But uh, the thing is, what we, we tend to simplify in politics in general, just so that we can try to understand things. People fight wars, people, leaders, uh, declare wars for complicated reasons. And often uh, they think it's against their will. They certainly don't want to commit their uh, children to uh, early death and so forth. But uh, sometimes they're not too complicated. I think, for instance, the Gulf war in the Gulf was not at all complicated. I thought it was a cynical uh, exercise in getting votes. And the next one, which will be, uh, let's see, it's the 8th of September. No, the 3rd of September, I think, within two weeks, we'll be in war in the Gulf again. That's not a very challenging prediction at all. The poor guy has to get some votes, and he knows just how to get them. And he's an amoral person. He really doesn't care about all the hundreds of thousands of people who die in order to keep him in office. It's a, a terrible thing. It's a wonderful country that I can say this and walk out the door and not be shot, too.